Um, I will call to order the South Borough School Committee open <coughs> meeting of Wednesday, February 12th, 2020. Um, the first item on the agenda is the public hearing for the FY21 budget. So thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Pleased to share with you the uh, South Borough Public Schools FY2021 operational budget um, public hearing. Uh, the South Borough School Committee is committed to providing an exceptional educational experience for all students in a cost-effective manner. Uh, the district believes that strong partnerships with parents, the community, and the town government are essential to developing a fiscally responsible and educationally sound school budget. The school committee utilizes its budget's priorities and the mission and vision of the district as guiding principles throughout the budget process to develop a budget that supports an exceptional education for all students. Copies of the FY 2021 school committee voted and approved, approved line item budget are available online at the central office and at the South Borough town offices. I'll be providing a total of the FY 2021 budget subcategories by function classification as part of the public hearing process. Um, so the budgets are divided into two components, regular education and special education, and I'll start with special edu uh, regular education. So uh, function classification administration, which um, includes school committee, superintendent, office, assistant superintendent, office, district-wide administration, finance and administrative services, personnel, legal services, and administrative technology totals $676,950. Uh, function classification instructional leadership, which includes supervision, principal's office, building technology, teacher salaries, teacher specialist salaries, instructional technology, technology specialist substitutes, librarian and media salaries, professional development, textbooks, instructional materials, instructional equipment, general supplies, instructional services, classroom instructional technology, instructional software, and guidance services, totals $11,218,716. The next function classification is pupil services, which includes attendance services, health services, transportation, student activities, and athletics. That totals $852,194. And the last uh, function for regular education is um, operations and maintenance, which includes custodial services, custodial supplies, heating, electricity, telephone, gasoline, water, sewer, maintenance of grounds, maintenance of buildings, maintenance of equipment, networking and telecommunication, and technology maintenance, which totals $1,558,613. And actually there's one other line item, which is um, benefits and fixed charges, which um, includes rentals and leases and contractual obligations because we are in a contractual negotiation year the new contractual obligations are included in that amount so that it's not clear exactly how much we have in our budget at this point in time for negotiation purposes. And that total is $721,004. So total regular day programs totals $15,027,477 or for regular education a 3.90% increase. For special education, um, the function classification administration, which includes legal services and administrative technology, is $18,000. Um, the next function classification is instructional leadership, which includes district sheriff supervision, supervision, director of student support services, assistant director of student support services, assistant to special education and office instruction, teacher salaries, professional development, textbooks, instructional technology, psychological services totals $4,803,676. The next function classification is people services, which includes health services and transportation, which totals $455,000. Next is operations and maintenance, which is maintenance of equipment, special education equipment, which totals $4,000. And then we have function classification programs, non-public schools, and payments to collaboratives, uh, which includes tuition out and tuition out to collaboratives, which totals $1,349,916. Uh, 
Um, so the total special education budget is six million six hundred thirty thousand five hundred ninety two dollars or a four point three percent increase and the combined between regular education and special education the total FY 2021 operational budget is twenty one million six hundred fifty eight thousand sixty nine dollars um, and this represents an overall increase of eight hundred thirty seven thousand one hundred ninety five dollars or a four point zero two percent increase over FY20. Okay, thank you. Any comments from the public on the budget? Okay. Concludes the hearing. Okay, thank you. All right, so the next uh, item on the agenda is audience sharing. Anybody have anything <coughs> you'd like to share? Okay, we'll move on to new business. Uh, the first thing is legislative update. So we've included in your packet a couple um, legislative updates. Um, the first is just the um, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education Commissioner's weekly memo. He um, included some information about the Student Opportunity Act um, and how that will uh, unfold moving forward. One component of the Student Opportunity Act is that every district needs to come up with a plan of how it will spend uh, additional funding that it receives. Mm -hmm. So we are receiving a little under um, $37,000 in additional revenue. So we'll have to come up with a plan that needs to be voted by the school committee um, by April 1st. So more information will be um, provided to the committee. And the timing actually works out well since we are engaged in a strategic planning process that um, a lot of the work that we're doing through that planning process will will be used to create this this student opportunity plan um, that we'll need to vote. The other um, information that I provided was mass budget summary of education funding, and again, it's it um, is another uh, piece of information about the Student Opportunity Act and the budget landscape that exists, um, and what we can expect in terms of additional funding. Um, as we've discussed, the, the, we did not expect to see additional Chapter 70 funding as a result of the Act, but we um, are anticipating that we could see additional um, revenue based on special education transportation reimbursements, so we're waiting to see what those numbers uh, will look like, and most likely we won't find out um, until late spring, uh, early summer. And then lastly, in your packet I included um, information about the resolutions um, that were voted um, at MASC. So it was just some interesting reading to see how the resolutions at the MASC conference played out um, in terms of the voting. So that was included in your packet. Um, and then lastly, I just hot off the press. Um, as you know, we are um, moving forward with the MSBA accelerated repair project at the Finn School, replacing uh, the Finn boiler. And we received a, a letter of support from um, State Representative Carolyn, Carolyn Dykema and State Senator James uh, B. Eldridge um, this afternoon. So I thought I'd include that in terms of the legislative update. And that is, those are the updates for today. Okay, excellent. Anyone have any comments or questions? Can you Sorry. repeat what you said about the, um, the second one, the Student Opportunity Act? In terms of, um, so right for, in terms of transportation reimbursement? Yes. So right now, um, special education um, transportation is not reimbursed through circuit breaker. Mm -hmm. um, so we incur all costs for transpor transporting students. With the Student Opportunity Act, um, over a four year period, um, they're going to reimburse districts for transportation. So we're looking at um, getting this year, I believe 25% um, transportation reimbursement on our special education transportation, which is significant because our, trans our special education transportation costs are a little under five hundred thousand yeah. dollars. So we could see some increased funding for that. Great. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so that brings us to old business and uh, the committee updates. So um, actually, I have. I did not include the MSPA statement of interest. Oh, I'm sorry. So that's okay. Oh, okay. So um, 
We, as you know, last year at this time, we submitted statement of interest oh, for the Mass School Building Authority uh, for the accelerated repair project. So we submitted three, um, three projects, the Finn Boiler, the Finn Roof, and the Trottier Roof. Um, one project we were invited to um, enter into the process, and that was the Finn Boiler. Um, and we've been, been engaged in that process um, since this, this summer. Um, the Finn roof and the Trottier roof, they were not, um, they did not make it into the first round application process. Um, so this year what we did was we resubmitted the Finn roof, the Trottier roof, as well as we added a statement of interest for the Neary roof. And that doesn't commit the district to uh, moving forward with any um, of these projects. It just gets us in line for the opportunity to actually engage in, in the next step in the process. So those statement of interest, actually, Katara, I have three documents for you to sign. I, <laughs> I did um, speak with Mark Purple, um, and he actually had the Board of Selectmen sign these statements of interest as well. So we're hoping to get these off tomorrow Great. for submission. Okay. And do we need to vote on this, or we just need to I just need to sign it. Just um, sign. It says duly voted by the South Grove School. We need to vote. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody <clears throat> should make a motion and read into the record the resolved, that whole paragraph, you think? I won't read this. <clears throat> I'll make a motion that we um, accept the statement of interest as included in the packet for the Finn, Trotter, and Neary Roos. There we Second. go. Sorry. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Yeah. Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That takes care of that. I think great. So now now old business. So just some, um, a, a quick update on the start time task force. Um, so this study group or task force has been working all year long in terms of um, coming up with the potential solutions for starting school later. Um, the three-step process, the first step in the process was education, so that has been ongoing. We've been doing education and outreach to the community. Um, the second step in the process is really identify potential solutions um, and look at logistics. <coughs> and part of that process was actually going out to bid for transportation contracts. So we are actually, <coughs> the bids are on the street as we speak. and. Um, we hope to have um, proposals submitted by two weeks from two weeks today, from today mm -hmm. um, which will give us some great information about how we move forward in terms of school start time. And the last phase of the process really is um, presenting scenarios to the school community and then presenting it to the combined committee for a vote around how to move forward. Um, and no matter what um, the committee decides, nothing will happen next year so in terms of start times. Um, and we are thinking that the elementary start times will not shift as a result of any change that is recommended. Um, that's our current thinking. Uh, does it doesn't make sense to um, solve a problem at the high school and middle school level and create problems at the elementary level in terms of having students arrive to school at 6.30 at the elementary level. So um, we feel like that um, the elementary times and the middle school times for the most part are where they should be. Um, and we're looking at potential solutions that don't impact times, th those levels. Okay. So the next step is getting the transportation contract. So we'll get the transportation contract. And that will give us more information on cost for Correct. any adjustments. Correct. Okay. And, and the one unique, uh, we, the way we went out to bid was a little bit unique. In the past, we did um, one consolidated uh, proposal. In, which included North Pro, South Pro, and the region. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that this time, but in addition, we also separated the three districts. So we, okay. we submitted a um, North Pro proposal, South Pro, and the region as separate entities okay. to see what types of um, information we receive from the diverse. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bidders will have the option to either bid on the entire district as a whole or if they choose to bid on an individual or individual districts, depending on their capacity. Okay. So next couple of weeks are, are critical in terms yeah. of, of, of information. Um, so the Start Time Task Force is a committed group and we're moving forward and um, 
I think the next few months will be critical in terms of the next steps. Okay. <clears throat> question about the bus contract. Doesn't, I mean, aren't we getting reimbursed because the buses drop off the you know, high school buses, which is a regional situation? They can do a continuous route to the two towns? Correct. So we have 32 buses. Um, as long as they, they transport students at the high school, we get regional transportation reimbursement. So we're looking at potential solutions that include the 32 buses. Um, and one example we're exploring is combining the middle school and high school routes together and starting around 8 o'clock. Um, so the buses still will go to the high school. We would still get regional transportation reimbursement and have a little impact on the pre-K to E um, busing costs. So we're looking at those solutions. But there's also the, the converse that we, you know, there's potentially how many buses, we're looking at ridership data. So we're looking at how many students actually ride the bus at the high school level. And Mr. Lavoie, that's one of his first projects that he'll be embarking on is really looking at ridership, um, looking at ways we can get a better sense of that, whether it's signing up for a bus pass, um, getting better data around who's riding our buses, mm -hmm. and using that to make informed decisions. Good luck. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> really. He's the right person. Thank you. All right. So Roto Webb will give a update on the music study group. Our pre-K-12 music study group is meeting tomorrow. That will be our third meeting. And the, the task of the music group is to highlight the wonderful opportunities that our students have. Uh, in our music programs, look for opportunities for growth within the next three to five years. And we will have a presentation ready for a um, joint school committee meeting at the end of this school year. Ah, okay. All right. And how many more meetings? Were there four meetings over the course so of the year? So we've extended. So tomorrow's the we, third. we realized we needed a few more ah, meetings. Okay. So we've added a couple more meetings. So yeah. March and April and May. Oh, great. So we can be ready with the information. Okay. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. And then the last update is the Strategic Planning Steering Committee. <coughs> so the um, work re really is now in the hands of the authoring committee. So there is a team of, I think, a little under 10 central office and school-based leaders who are really taking all the survey data, the portrait of the graduate, and really thinking about where we want to head. Um, and they're creating drafts and, and authoring so that um, the next committee meeting is um, the Monday after um, February break, and we'll be presenting a draft um, and getting feedback. We'll be presenting drafts to the community for feedback, um, and then um, hopefully to finalize the strategic plan to bring to the committee in March or April um, for a deep dive and a review and hopefully approval. So okay. we are on, on track for that work. Okay, great. And the information that's being consolidated by the authoring committee is from the survey? The survey. And the meetings The portrait of the graduate. Yeah. We've had um, many NASA leadership meetings okay. collecting data. We're looking at where we, where we um, are in terms of our Vision 2020 strategic <coughs> plan. And so we're taking all of that data and creating um, a synthesized plan to present back to the steering committee and the community. Okay. Right, great. on any of that. Okay, thank you. So we'll move on to superintendent's report to the committee. So the first, um, in, your, in you, on your online packet, um, we have enrollment. Oh, by the way, this was a great packet not to print. Yes. yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I thought the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Same. I was like, Whoa. what a good example. A lot yeah. of paper. Cheryl. Nancy and the environment, thank you. Yes, right. <laughs> so, um, so enrollments have remained fairly steady. We've uh, increased um, three students since our December report. Um, so the total enrollment at this time is 1,203 students. So next in your packet is the FY20 uh, monthly general fund expenditure report, which I'll have Becky speak to. So as of January 31st, the district had $514,402 remaining on the bottom line, or 2.47% remaining. Um, we are 
coming in on the home stretch, really, believe it or not. And so we're working together collaboratively with the building leaders um, to look at what spending remains um, or needs that they have remaining for this year. Um, compared to last year, we're tracking on just as we were. 580,786 is what we have remaining last year at this point in time, or 2.85%. Um, so we are, uh, we're, I think, cruising. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but not really. <laughs> I'm going to approve. Uh, Thank you. I move we accept the fiscal year 2020 budget monthly general fund expenditure report as of January 31st, 2020 for the South Borough Public School District until audited. Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? So next in your packet is the FY21 budget priorities, which obviously have guided the work of the budget process this year. Um, you also have the FY21 capital plan. Um, and as we spoke about the two statement of interest uh, for the roofs at Finn, um, Yuri, and Trottier are on the capital plan. Um, you also have in your packet the FY21 budget calendar, so we'll add public hearing tonight's date. And also I think the next um, really target meeting date is town meeting, meeting which yeah. is March 28th, I believe. Okay. Um, you also have in your packet the FY21 school committee approved budget. Um, and lastly, just an update on the South Borough Advisory Committee uh, meeting um, that took place um, a couple weeks ago. Um, so I thought it was a great opportunity to, to share um, the budget process and where we were in terms of the budget priorities uh, at, from a pre-K through eight level. Um, I thought we were asked a lot of great questions and. Um, it was a nice opportunity to, to celebrate and also articulate um, some of the decisions and priorities that the budget outlines. <coughs> so. Yeah. No, I thought I thought it was it was a great presentation. Mm -hmm. I thought they did have some very good questions and um, really did a nice job understanding mm -hmm. where this is coming from and all the all the work that went into it. So, yeah. okay. So next. In your packet, you have the distribution of the uh, personnel report. Are we, so wait, so next is educational policy. None I'm sorry, time. right over it. And then, that's okay, and then policy distribution, I think sexual harassment in the school. So we have a, a second reading mm -hmm. for um, sexual harassment in the school, A100. So that's the will of the committee a vote to approve. No significant changes from the last time that policy was brought forth. Right. I'll move that we vote to approve policy A100, sexual harassment in the school. Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. Thank you. All right. Then now we have personnel report. So, um, personnel reports in your packet. Um, we do have the appointment of Gary Hershuk, Principal of Trottier Middle School. So, um, as well as the resignations of uh, Keith Lavoy, <laughs> Principal of Trottier Middle School. So, um, Gary will officially um, take on his role on February 24th, as well as Keith. So we have some shifting that will be happening. So we're very excited for both um, Gary and Keith. I think they'll do an exceptional job in their new roles. We also will welcome, uh, we'll welcome Stacy Mahoney on, right. on February 24th. Correct. So, so everything's lining up and yeah. 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 That's great. in the right direction. Congratulations and yeah. good luck. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. That's great. <laughs> Very exciting. I love the resignations where people don't really leave. I know. Yeah. <laughs> this is pretty weird to write, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get like an hour in there? <laughs> right. yeah. I didn't know how to write it. I had no idea what to do. Right. Need some guidance. Uh, good riddance. Good see you later. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> didn't send that email. Yeah, I know. Both Keith and Gary know I've taken a personal interest in the shifting part, so uh, yes. we'll get into that anymore. But you know, so. it's an interesting conversation. <laughs> and Keith has left a long list for Gary. 
and then I've Working left. <laughs> then we've left along with lists for keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> We're inheriting lists. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, it's exciting. It yeah, is. it is Very. exciting. It's great. Looking forward to it. Okay. Great. So next we have uh, communications. I guess none at this time. And then action on minutes. So we have um, the open meeting of January 8th, 2020, vote to approve, um, as well as January 28th, 2020, vote to approve. And we have one um, executive session minutes that vote to approve and retain. Okay. And I did pass out the executive session yep. minutes. So I just have a copy of those. I'll move that we go to accept the open <coughs> meeting minutes of January 8th, 2020 meeting, as well as the minutes of the special open meeting of January 28th, 2020. All second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. And I'll move that we approve and retain the minutes of the executive session minutes, of, sorry, the meeting of the executive session of January 8th, 2020. All second. Okay, discussion? All in favor? All right, very good. Thank you. All right, uh, approval of bills and payrolls. See the pile? Great. Okay. Um, agenda items for next month. So, it's a quiet um, agenda. So, mm -hmm. actually, um, I think the principals, we could talk about having some type of student presentation, thinking about sure. Is there any particular topics you would like? No, I, well, as we were going through tonight, yeah. it occurred to me maybe an update on the transportation yeah. contract situation, that whole thing. Um, I don't know if any of the other ones make sense to have another update in just a month, probably not. We haven't had a world language update in a little while. I was thinking about that. If, if you want to put placeholder in mm -hmm. for <coughs> the master plan, yeah. okay. update for the school committee, I don't know what kind of an update there's going to be. Then, um, um, I guess if, let me just sh briefly share, um, there was a request. This, maybe this is supposed to be. And there was a request from the committee, which <coughs> the superintendent mm -hmm. copied the chair, um, that um, if there was a way to distribute some some questionnaires, um, which they're, the master plan committee is really looking for feedback from constituencies of citizens in town. And you know, obviously, a large constituency is uh, parents of uh, school children. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if if there would be a way to actually um, distribute that kind of electronically, just through the same way we distribute things electronically, uh, Superintendent Gratian has said, okay, but there's been no further activity from the Master Plan Committee that I'm aware of. I'm headed over there tonight after the school okay. committee meeting, so I, I don't know what or if is coming back yet, but okay. that's the only communication that kind of we've, we've had between that committee and schools. So we can put a placeholder for that. So if we put a placeholder sure. in, maybe something okay. will have happened. All right, sounds good to me. One other agenda, um, potential agenda topic is the, there has been a committee working on school uh, improvement plans okay. and really thinking about the process for school improvement plans and making sure that it's aligned with our strategic planning process. Mm -hmm. So um, a presentation could be made around what that looks like and how it's changing um, and why we might want to consider changing the process. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. That yeah. would be good context and background yeah. for the school improvement plan presentations. That'd be great. Okay. All right. Um, that brings us to the second audience sharing. Anyone have anything to share? Okay. Uh, so, our, the plan is to move into executive session. If somebody would like to make a motion for that, I'll move that we <coughs> move into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining due to the chair's determination that a discussion regarding this matter in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the position of the committee with no intent to return to open meeting. So 
second. Okay. Discussion? Roll call vote? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you.